Welcome to the Grim Leftovers Show with Grimnir every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on reallibertymedia.com and rlmradio.xyz. Hey, hey folks, howdy, it's Monday evening, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Mountain Time right now on February 3rd, 2020. How the hell you all doing out there? RealLibertyBB.com. Yes, indeed, RLMRadio.xyz. Hey, it's uh, February. February. Thank you for that that sound check there, Mr. Rob Works. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, so <laughs> it's February. That means this is the donation drive month for RealLibertyBB.com. Donation drive. So if you got uh, some uh, extra ducats, in your ducket holder, uh, head on over to reallibertymedia.com and hit that big old red donation button and send a donation our way. That way we can keep this stuff going. We can keep it running for the uh, rest of the year until next February when we ask again. But yeah, it's uh, that. So far we have received one that donation already, and I would like to thank the person or people there could be two people involved in, in that donation, but yeah, uh, feel free uh, to send them our way. Oh, if you're a crypto person and you have either a Bitcoin or Dogecoin, we accept donations in that manner as well. But if you do uh, donate uh, crypto, send me an email and say, "Hey, I sent you some, uh, I sent you some Bitcoin or some cryptos." And uh, we'll be glad that you did. And uh, thank you very much for those thinking of doing it that way. Appreciate it. Uh, ba 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 ba. What else is going on? Oh, our our friend Vin E. Vincent Easley the uh, second, who's been hanging out there at the hospital due to some medical issues, is on the mend. On the mend. Quickly on the mend. He will be released from that institution tomorrow and off on to. Uh, friend's place, I guess, to uh, go through a little bit of rehab until he gets fully back to himself, whatever that means. <laughs> so get well, man, get well, uh, Vinny. Uh, uh, you know, we uh, could, it would be good to see you back and uh, back to your old annoying self. I mean, wonderful self. <laughs> All right. Uh, what else we got going on uh, to tell you about? I think nothing. I think we'll get right into the stories. I could, I could, I could tell you about various other things going on in my personal life, but uh, uh, what's the point? Uh, <laughs> I got stories lined up here, <laughs> and let's get on with those. Uh, I got a bunch of them. I, as I usually do, I got about ten, ten stories, you know. So, oh, let me say hi and howdy to the folks in the chat first before I go get get along. We have a chat room over here on reallibertymedia.com. For those of you unaware, if you're out there listening and saying, hey, where is this coming from? Come on over uh, to reallibertymedia.com and hit that pop-up chat button, and you can join on in here with all the great folks that are here and uh, say hi and howdy and make comments to, about the stories that I cover as I go through the show here. Uh, but, yeah, we got all kinds of great folks here tonight. And bots as well, bots, barman. Uh, we have Beetle and Cowboy Tech, myself and the Moose Girl, uh, Miss Kate, uh, Anti and Asmodeus, Chalcedony, Circle, Circle, Circle. Uh, <laughs> damn, Van Meter. Damn. Uh, we we got a, we got a story about you later later on, Donna. Damn. Uh, but not really about you, but <laughs> I thought about you when I, when I read it first. <laughs> anyway, we got Echelon and Java Doctor, the Prince Man from the Power Hour on uh, Thursday evenings, 11 p.m. Eastern, right here. Uh, we have Rob Works and his silly, or Seely, I guess, by design. I always say it's silly, but it's Seely by design. Just go to RobWorks.com. And uh, you'll see what it is, and, and you'll probably want some. If not, well, at least read up on it and see what it's all about, because uh, good stuff, good stuff. Uh, we have uh, AKA, AKA Trust No One. Yeah, it's AKA, because he's really roams. We have the Vanna White and Weather Dark Butts. Uh, Phantom! CC66, the Choscura guy. I saw him chatting this morning. I 
It's always a challenge watch, watching him chat. Uh, Cyborg Noodle. Uh, duh. <laughs> hey, duh. How's it doing? going, dude? Uh, e, uh, man, Ensiv. The Flasher. Flash somebody. Uh, Frumpsty. The Frumpster. Uh, Grab it. JJ's. Nuts for Art, a.k.a. Lonnie, who uh, does a show here on Wednesday mornings. Uh, Anti-nuke type stuff. It's it's very good stuff, and, and she does interviews with various folk. Uh, you should uh, at least check out her podcast, if not tuning in live on her show. But, uh, yeah, Nuts for Art, uh, the, uh, her, her show comes on Wednesday mornings at, well, noon Eastern there on that. Pone Sauce and Sock Puppet, Slim Jim Flim. The smart ass, holiest of writers, Vinny, and uh, Zipix, Zipix, who is also on that power hour with Mr. Prince. Yeah. <laughs> All right, enough of that. Uh, we got more people listening that are out here in the chat that I know of. Uh, but uh, yeah, how did how did see y'all out there? Let's get right on to it now. We're, we've already wasted six minutes here <laughs> talking about nothing. All right, from the recently banned for life from Twitter, ZeroHedge.com. Yeah, they banned him. Twitter banned Zero Hedge. Not worry not, though. Worry not. If not for all of the rest of us that tweet stuff over to Twitter from the Zero Hedge website, because we like a lot of their stories, uh, there's another uh, person over there that's tweeting every story from Zero Hedge over to Twitter. So... Suck on that, Jack. <laughs> All right, from Zero Hedge here. Uh, central bankers, the banksters, are quietly freaking out about how to fight the next recession. Yes, this article posted on January 11, 2020. Uh, actually, came come from a guy named Pedro Nicolai de Costiva uh, from Forbes.com. The world's top central bank officials are rightly concerned that politicians and rich economies missed one key lesson. Well, at least one. Uh, they certainly missed this one, but they missed a lot of key lessons during the last recession. Interest rate cuts can help to moderate a downturn, but aggressive fiscal policy is key to a healthy recovery. And we have not seen any aggressive fiscal policy. We have seen horrible, horrible fiscal policy. Oh, we got Alex Jones from Australia, huh? Okay, cool. Um, I guess that's Australia, I, I assume. <laughs> All right. It was pro-austerity stance, both in the U.S. of A. and even more sal sal saliently in the Eurozone, that arguably prolonged the period of high unemployment and low wage growth from that plagued, or that plagued most of the decade long recovery in 2007 through 2009, the U.S. Great Recession. Charles! Oh, okay. Uh, we, we, we have an Alex Jones story coming up later on, uh, too. Uh, Outgoing Bank of England Governor Mark Carney told the Financial Times this week that the central banks are running low on fuel. Well, I guess fumes, running on fumes with nowhere to go to try and adjust things, to try and help in a recessionary period, would be low on fuel. You got nothing left. The can has been kicked and kicked, and it's at the end of the road. There's no more road to kick that can. If there were to be a deeper downturn, which is pretty much inevitable, um, that requires more stimulus than a conventional recession, then it's not clear that monetary policy would have suspicious, sufficient space. You got nothing. <laughs> Today in money, uh, it's generally true that there's much less ammunition for all major central banks than, previous, uh, than they previously had, and I'm of the opinion that this situation will persist for some time. Of course it will. They're not doing anything to change that. Interest rates should have been way up by now. They should have been 5 6 
but they're still down there at a quarter percent or negative percentages in some areas. It's insane. Oh, from Austin, not Australia. Okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> that echoed sentiment of Christine Lagarde, that lizard person, who recently took over the European Central Bank. She's telling the budget-shy European politicians, especially in Germany, to get to work. New, or now, a new paper from the Fed board, economist Michael Kiley, uh, points to similar alarm among U.S. central banksters about their ability to fight future slumps. And rightfully so. Uh, U.S. interest rates likely go negative in a recession scenario. Negative. That's not interest. <laughs> Let me explain to you basic math. When you go to minus, you don't have interest going on there. <laughs> so... Um, drawing up two basic assumptions of what a downturn might look like, Kylie finds that a recession may result in near zero interest rates. You got that already at long maturities, bringing U.S. experience closer to that seat in Europe and Japan. This, says Kylie, could imply limits on the ability of monetary policy to support a recovery. You got Jack, you got nothing. You are out of ammo. You're firing blanks. <laughs> oh, Vinny is the AJ of New Zealand. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, I love that story. Because it's just so obvious. I mean, who who are they trying to explain this to? Kindergartners, you know, I, I don't know. All right, you may remember some years ago, over in Poland, they had a president by the name of Lech Walesa. Lech Walesa. He was an interesting guy. He, he, he really was an interesting guy. But now, now, Lech. Good old Lex, the Lexer, <laughs> posted on January 1st, 2020 here at alien-ufo-sightings.com. Yeah, uh, good old Lex is a warning of an E.T. invasion. Yes, he is. Former Polish President Lech Walesa uh, gave a speech this week in which he warned of the potential threat of an alien invasion. Well, Lessa, well, Lessa served as the country's president from 1990 through 1995 and was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize back in 1983. Uh, though he hasn't served in government for almost 25 years, well, Lessa showed he still knew how to capture the media's attention when he decided to discuss the hot-button topic and his belief that an invasion may be imminent. Imminent! <laughs> At a civic club. Oh, boy. During the colorful speech, Walesa argued that he believed that there were three levels of intellectual develop, development in the cosmos, with humans unfortunately residing at the bottom. Lowest rung on the ladder. Or lo the lowest scum in the bucket. I, I, I don't know how you want to say that. It's unclear... Whether Walesa was simply using the topic of extraterrestrials as a partisan talking point. Now, I, I don't think aliens are really partisan. I, I don't think they take the sides of, of liberals or conservatives. I, I really don't think they care. But uh, either way, or whether he may have some actual knowledge, actual knowledge of their existence, though it seems the former is more likely. And he expressed his apparent disdain for certain global leaders. What are they doing here? He said, if we threaten uh, destabilization, Putin, uh, they will interrupt us, cut us in half. The land will collapse. We, we will all crush us. I think he meant they. Unfortunately, full translation of the retired politician's speech are not readily available, but one excerpt uh, gives insight into some of Willis's extraterrestrial beliefs, including vague references 
to what might be construed as the work of Zachariah Sitchin or Eric von Donkin, Donington. <laughs> the higher civilizations can hold us that way for 5,000 years. They will send Adam and Eve and we will build the world again, he said. People find things and digging stones, these pyramids. No answer. Where did it come from? He also made mention of his belief that there have been a number of civilizations in our history that have reached the current levels of technological advancement, but which have suffered the fate, he says, he believes, modern civilization is currently facing collapse due to war and a lack of peaceful communication. Willessa certainly is not the first public official whose belief in extraterrestrial intelligence has aroused interest, uh, as well as ridicule in the media. In the United States, Florida Congressman Bettina Rodriguez Aguiara made headlines multiple times for her claim that she was abducted by tall, blonde alien entities, the uh, Norse variety there, uh, when she was a child. And, of course, former Senate Majority, Majority Leader Harry Reid continues to espouse his conviction that the UFO phenomenon is real and worth investigating seriously. But others are skeptical when world leaders and politicians begin speaking of alien invasion or extraterrestrial technology in general as they fear a false flag alien attack may be used to enforce a nefarious global agenda. Could Willessa be a provocateur in this grand conspiracy? Or is he genuinely concerned for humanity? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Good old Lek. <laughs> he did some good things uh, in, a, in a terrible place. So, um, uh, <laughs> Yeah. All right. See what we're talking about here in the chat. Yeah, I do love being talked down to, Rob. It's it's wonderful. It makes my day, <laughs> especially when it's so laughable. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, Java Doctor is here talking about more coronavirus cases. Oh, cool, 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 cool. Of course, I hear uh, one of the uh, items to blame coronavirus on is global warming or oh, wait 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 climate change however over there in the country of sweden <laughs> greta's homeland yeah y'all know greta <laughs> uh this article posted the 11th of january 2020 on breitbart.com Swedes vote climate policy, biggest waste of taxpayer money in 2019. The Swedish public has voted that climate change spending has been the biggest waste of taxpayer money in the year of 2019, according to a poll by the Swedish Taxpayers Association. The Taxpayers Association released the results of their annual wasteful spending poll earlier this week, declaring that climate policy had been the biggest waste of money, largely due to the fact that despite the spending, emissions in Sweden had actually slightly increased. In 2014, the Swedish national government spent 5.2 billion Swedish krona uh, about 547 million U.S. dollars, a number that has more than dub more than doubled to 12.6 billion krona for the planned 2020 budget. The government has more than doubled the appropriations for climate policy, but despite this, emissions no longer decrease. In 2018, emissions even increased. That's why climate policy has been voted. The worst waste of the year. Besides, you're fighting a phantom. You're, you're fighting something that just doesn't exist. That <laughs> the, the only reason for the, the whole climate change hoax 
is control and theft. Yep, 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 yep. Too much tax money is wasted without benefit to those who pay. Because you can't benefit from trying to fight a phantom. It is no less important that money has an effect when it's invested in something that is important. Rather the opposite, he added. In second place in the poll was a project from the Artists Commission that oversaw a million krona donated to a project focused on art for earthworms and fungi. Art for earthworms and fungi. <laughs> that sounds like it's worth a million krona right there, you betcha. Um, Matt Calderborg and wife Katrin Zaraksassen Calderborg uh, were behind the project and told the newspaper Expressum, Art for Birds, Bumblebees, Beetles, Worms, and Fungi is a project uh, that wants to turn up upside down our habitual way of seeing and understanding the world. Here, nature's smaller inhabitants, and not those depicted, but those themselves, in their own right, are recipients of the art. Because you all know how much earthworms appreciate art. That wasteful spending poll results come as many municipal governments face financial hardships or even bankruptcy due to a lack of money to support recently arrived migrants who have largely remained out of the labor force. An estimated 90% of migrants who came to the country during the height of the 2015 migrant crisis and received permanent resin residency, are unemployed. And folks are overjoyed. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Guberman at its finest, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, here it is. Here, here, here's your story, data. <laughs> Uh, it's not really your story, but it's your story. <laughs> Posted on Sputnik News here uh, on the uh, da -da 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 first thirteenth, thirteenth of January, twenty twenty. Oh my goodness! One million moms, moms, slam Burger King for D word commercial. D word in a new, new commercial. The D word. A million moms are upset over Burger King using the D word in a new commercial. And when I first read this headline, I remember thinking to myself, D word? What are they calling somebody a dick? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Nothing so direct or nefarious. <laughs> no. Oh, God. Burger King's new Meatless Impossible Burger has recently taken the economy class culinary world by storm. At least that's what this says. The new Whopper Burger features an impossible plant-based patty in place of traditional beef one. You mean fake meat in place of real meat. The product has met with praise as well as criticism. The conservative organization, One Million Moms, which has pledged to fight against indecency, has accused Burger King of crossing the line on Sunday over its impossible Whopper commercial for using the D word. The group published in a statement on its website which reads, Burger King is airing a commercial that uses profanity to advertise its Impossible Whopper, a burger made from plants instead of beef. The language in the commercial is offensive. Offensive! And it said, <laughs> it's sad that this once <laughs> family restaurant has made yet another deliberate decision to produce a controversial advertisement instead of a wholesome one. The commercial by Burger King involves a series of reactions to taste tests of the newly released and popular vegetarian burger, although not really vegetarian burger. 
I covered that on Freaker's Ball Friday night. One man who is seemingly shocked by Impossible Whopper's deliciousness responds to the sample by saying, Damn, that's good. Damn, that's good. Damn, that's the, that is the, the terrible curse word that they used. Damn. Now, I could understand somebody respond, responding to the tasting the Whopper by, Damn, that tastes like dick. <laughs> Hell no, I ain't eating that. <laughs> what is this thing? <laughs> but no, damn, that is the word that one million moms are upset over. Yeah. <laughs> Burger King's choice of words uh, may have been inspired by the fast foods critic Damon Patterson, who often used the word "dayum," which is D-A-Y-M. Uh, there's also, uh, these also being the first four letters of his name, in expressing approval for the burgers and, and other American fast food from behind the wheel of his car on his YouTube channel, Dayam Drops. His most popular uh, YouTube review of Five Guys Burgers and Fries in 2012 gained over 10 million hits. It went on the catapult uh, the, the street food critic to YouTube stardom via an August 2012 songified version of the review, Oh My Damn, <laughs> which got nearly 39 million views. This guy's eating fast food posting it on YouTube, and getting 40 million people to look at it? And I never heard of the guy, but whatever. And nevertheless, one million moms considers the D word uh, to be going too far, calling it irresponsible and tasteless, much like the burger itself. The organization uh, urged the public to sign a petition calling for Burger King to remove the advert, or at very least, edit out the cuss word immediately. So from now on, here in the chat, Donna will uh, be known as D-Word Van Meter. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, D-Word, how you doing? Um, <laughs> the group has previously gone after commercials it has deemed inappropriate seeking to stop the exploitation of our children. In December, the group successfully managed to get the Hallmark Channel to pull a Zola commercial, whatever that is, which featured two women kissing at the same-sex wedding. How horrible. Two women getting married and kissing. Oh, Horrible. All right, all right. Now parents can no longer trust Hallmark because Hallmark is no longer allowing parents to be the primary educators when it comes to sex and sexual morality because one million moms knows better. One million moms, which I don't know how many people are in the group. There's probably like 12 moms in the group called One Million Moms. I, I really have no idea. In response to the public backlash to the commercial, however, the network brought back the same-sex marriage commercial and reversed, reversed its initial decision to pull it. Well, watching two women uh, kissing may get somebody to pull it, <laughs> but uh, we're not going there. And the impossible Whopper itself has drawn controversy from vegan and vegetarian commercials customers as uh, numen, numerous franchises were found to be using the same grill uh, yeah uh, as I explained uh, Burger King already said uh, yeah no, we never told you this was vegan or vegetarians you can make up whatever fantasies about our burgers you want but you didn't get it from us <laughs> so there you go uh, D word Van Meter <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> Pansies or panties or pampers. Huh? We got a, we got a special thing here. I'll get to it in a minute. <laughs> on Posted on uh, fox61.com uh, via CNN Wire from January 12th of this year. Pampers, the diaper makers. Pampers. New device sends you 
a notification when your kid has a dirty diaper. You say, what now? <laughs> Lumi, L-U-M-I, by Pampers is a smart sensor that attaches to your infant's diaper and sends you a notification when they go to the bathroom. Pampers showed off the sensor, which also tracks sleep at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas this week. Lumi by Pampers is described on the company's website as the world's first all-in-one connected care system that helps parents track day-to-day -day developments and monitor their baby 24-7 so they can see emerging patterns and suitable, establish a suitable routine. Lumi uh, system uses an HD night vision camera capable of monitoring temperature and humidity, the baby sensor, and an app to compile data for parents. The product is already available online. Now, my first thought on this here, too, um, was that... Uh, they got a sensor in the diaper, but it, it sounds like it's external to the diaper, which may be slightly better. But I, I was thinking they, they got to put this thing, this <laughs> basically radiating your your children's crotch. Now if this this thing, HD night vision camera, I guess pointed at the baby. Better than having a, a, a sensor right there, pointing at your baby's crotch or, you know, radiating your baby's crotch. I, I don't know how much better this is. I would be very skeptical of it if I were you. Um, you know, there used to be a time, like the time when I was born, 1960. That's a few years back now, huh? Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll be 60 this year. Um, yeah, so um, uh, that that they just left you there. You you just lay there and piss or crap in your diaper all night long, you know? Uh, that was just the way it was. And uh, uh, you didn't have somebody coming in to tend to you every time you, you let out a little noise. Uh, I, I don't, I don't, I really don't like this here. And, and I'm sure that whatever these, uh, HT, HD night vision cameras are, since they're connected, are easily hackable. Um, and that's something else you might want to consider. That's something you might want to think of because, uh, do you want some weirdos out there hacking into your, your baby monitoring camera? There's some creepy dudes out there, maybe some creepy women as well. I don't know. Uh, e either way, um, I, I don't like the sound of this, but better than I initially thought. It was going to be uh, on that because uh, <laughs> so when I first read that, it was like, holy hell. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I meant to mute there on that, but I, I missed it. All right, that happens. That happens. Okay, from the website, thefreethoughtproject.com, posted here on January 12, 2020. Federal court rules cops can taser and choke you, choke you, because you have trouble understanding them. That means you are resisting. If you don't understand the words coming out of this swine's face as he's screaming various things at you, as you often know, they tell you to do two different things at the same time. If you've seen any of the videos that I've seen, which have been numerous, uh, they, they will give you conflicting commands. And yes, they call them commands because when it comes out of one of their mouths, it's a command. It's not like you get to question it. It's not like you get to say, hey, you're not my boss because they will kill you or at least tase and choke you because you are not understanding their words. That means you are resisting them. And if you resist them in any way, they can do all kinds of horrible shit to you. Muskogee, Oklahoma. 
An Oklahoma federal court has refused to hold police responsible for brutalizing an African-American man, which I don't know what the African part or American part uh, has to do with anything. Just say a man who, despite complying with police orders during an arrest, was subjected to excessive force and brutality, including, including being thrown to the ground, tasered, and placed in a chokehold that rendered him unconscious and required his hospitalization for three days. In granting the police officer's motion to dismiss a Fourth Amendment lawsuit filed by attorneys for the Rutherford Institute on behalf of Jeriel Edwards, the court ruled that Edwards' confusion and trouble understanding police directions constituted resistance that justified the force used by the four police officers involved in the violent arrest. Understanding, uh, trouble understanding police directions constituted resistance that justified the use of force. Institute attorneys argued that, as shown by dash cam video of the arrest, Edwards was peaceful, did not defy police officers, and did nothing to provoke the clearly unreasonable and excessive force uh, em employed by the police. Affiliate attorney Andrea Warden is assisting the, in the defense of Edwards' Fourth Amendment rights. If you ask police what Americans should do to stay alive during encounters with law enforcement, they will tell you, comply, cooperate, obey, do not resist, do not argue, do not make threatening gestures or statements, avoid sudden movements. Well, what are they, this is so you don't die. This is, <laughs> this is so you don't die. And submit to the search of their persons and belongings. Do all these things merely because some jackbooted thug says so. But that's according to constitutional attorney. Do you have to do all that to not be killed, according to constitutional attorney John W. Whitehead, president of the Rutherford Institute, and the author of Battlefield America, The War on American People. The problem is what to do when compliance is not enough. How can you maintain the illusion of freedom? Yeah, how do you maintain the illusion of freedom when you're complying, cooperating, obeying, not resisting, not arguing, not making threatening gestures or statements, avoiding some sudden movements, and submitting to searches of your personal belongings? Where do you get an illusion of freedom and all that? Uh, <laughs> Americans are being shot, strip searched, choked, beaten, and tasered by police for little more than daring to frown, smile, question, challenge in order, or merely exist. Just merely exist. On October 25th, 2016, Jerry L. Edwards was sitting in his car in the parking lot of a Muskogee Wendy's restaurant when he was approached by a city of Muskogee police officer who ordered Edwards to put the car in park and provide his identification. Body and dash cam video uh, of the encounter shows the officer made the request even though he already knew Edwards' identity. The officer then ordered Edwards to get out of the vehicle and remove his hands from his pockets. Edwards complied with all of the officer's orders. At this time, a second Muskogee police officer arrived at the scene. As Edwards exited the vehicle, he was ordered to face the vehicle and place his hands behind his back. At this point, one of the officers grabbed Edwards' right arm, while the other officers shoved him into the corner of the car door. Followed by the officers' aggressive grabbing, uh, Edwards' upper body and pushing his head into the corner of the car door as they attempted to place his hands behind his back. One officer then told Edwards to get to the ground, but before he could do, do so, the officer slammed him to the pavement. As officers pushed Edwards' head and neck to the ground, they also placed a knee on his body to pin him to the ground. Edwards repeatedly asked why the officers were abusing him, but got no answer. Instead, the first officer tased 
uh, or fired a taser at Edwards as he lay on the ground. A third officer arrived on the scene and made two striking motions at Edwards, the impact of which can be heard on the body camera video. A fourth officer arrived at the scene and put Edwards in a chokehold. As the four officers dragged Edwards to the ground, another joined in the fray and held Edwards down by digging his knee into his body. Edwards lost consciousness and arrived to the hospital, where he was admitted to the intensive care unit. And you still have an illusion of freedom? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, terrorists hate you for your freedom, right? <laughs> oh, my God. Sakal! I see Circle joining here. Oh, she just popped out and left. She timed out. Maybe she's not here. Okay. Anyway, um, yeah. So, if you want to stay alive, let me just go over this part again. If you want to stay alive during an encounter with law enforcement... You should comply, cooperate, obey, not resist, not argue, not make threatening gestures or statements, avoid sudden movements, and submit, submit to a search of your person and belongings. If you want to stay alive. <laughs> yeah. Freedom! You betcha, baby. <laughs> Oh, my God. Okay. Second sip of water. Let's, let's say you're a farmer, and you got a little plot of land somewhere, and you're growing. You're legally allowed to grow crop there in your field. But somehow, somehow, the jackboots are not impressed that, that this plant is legal. They don't like it being legal. They don't want it to be legal. They're going to mess you up. They're going to mess you up because, well, they love the drug war. Because the drug war gives them so much so much ability to come in and do all kinds of bad stuff to you. This here posted on blacklistednews.com January 13th by Matt Agarist of the Free Thought Project. Drug war addicted cops raid hemp farm. Bulldoze a struggling farmer's million dollar crop. Ya yeah, baby. Because government is the antithesis to freedom, industrial hemp has been banned nationwide since 1937, ostensibly due to the plant's similarities to the evil weed, the devil's lettuce, marijuana. Many have speculated that this move was also due to the fact that cannabis is in direct competition with the pharmaceutical industry by providing a safer alternative treatment as well as directly competing with the petrochemical industry. Oh, and others, textiles, lumber, yeah, all kinds of stuff. Oh, and hemp can just do so many things. It's wonderful. But anyway, it, 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 it uh, competes directly, uh, definitely, with the pharmaceuticals and petrochemicals. However, all this changed in December 2018 after the Donald, yes, President Trump, signed the American Agriculture Improvement, Improvement Act of 2018. And I have to give the Donald a little clap for actually signing that and pushing this through, legalizing industrial hemp on a national scale. Despite this move, law enforcement across the country continue to go after entirely legal businesses for selling this THC-free version of the cannabis plant. However, they are quickly being exposed for the tyrants that they are. Even the mainstream media, who have long suppressed and ignored the benefits of hemp, are now forced to cover its benefits. 
in spite of knowingly forging a name for themselves on the wrong side of history, by prosecuting innocent farmers, tyrants in the enforcement class wage on. A struggling farmer in South Carolina just learned this the hard way when dozens of cops raided his farm and bulldozed his entire hemp crop he says was worth several million dollars. After hemp was legalized with the farm bill, John Pendavaris got to work plowing into his fields last year. Unfortunately, his crop was in the path of Hurricane Dorian last year and took a massive hit. The plants were flattened and the land was flooded, so he was forced to use the land that was not officially permitted for hemp by the State Agricultural Department. According to WAPO, he called the agency to ask whether he should hire a crew to manually prop up the 25,000 plants. Uh, they said, keep doing what you're doing. Just keep doing what you're doing. He remembers, days later, a platoon of militarized police showed up and raided his farm, handcuffing and arresting him for illegal hemp cultivation on his own property. These heroes, these public servants, then bulldozed his crop. It must have been 30 of them coming from everywhere, Pendarvis said. Now it's just all rotted up. As WAPO reports, Pendarvis Pend uh, first ran into trouble after raising a first round of seedlings in his greenhouse in May and realizing that the water supply for his permitted field was insufficient. With a, with a limited planting window, he utilized an adjacent field and another two acres in a field owned by a colleague 100 miles north. He says he called the State Agricultural Department and was told to submit an amendment form. According to agency spokesman Eva Moore, he did not complete the form until after officials inspected his property. Uh, weeks before the hurricane hit, they reported him to the Law Enforcement Division that handles state-level drug crimes. Drug crimes. Uh-huh. For willfully planting on an unpermitted field. You got a permit for that dirt? I want to see your permit for using dirt. <laughs> His attorney, State Senator Brad Huto, uh, contends that Pendarvis was treated like a drug trafficker by officers who showed up and that his crop was destroyed despite the South Carolina Attorney General saying judicial review should first be sought in such cases. Citing pending litigation in the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division declined to comment on the case or its exemption of the hemp law. Because cops still cage kidnap, cage, and even kill people for marijuana, and because marijuana smells kind of like hemp, or hemp smells kind of like marijuana, as the case may be, the state is still very addicted to eradicating the plant and people who dare grow it without flawlessly jumping through every single little hoop. For this reason, States across the country have moved to ban the consumption of the hemp flower and only allow the oils and subsequent health products. Otherwise, Officer Weed Hater would, would not be able to distinguish between someone smoking entirely legal hemp. Do people actually smoke hemp? Uh, uh, or its cousin, the devil's lettuce. Do people actually smoke hemp? I gotta wonder. Anyway, South Carolina is making a name for itself when it comes to tyrannical hemp enforcement. Earlier this month, police in South Carolina seized a 183-pound shipment of hemp they thought was marijuana, despite the paperwork clearly showing it was hemp. Welford's police chief, David Green, stands by his decision to seize the product, going so far as to give out his cell phone number saying, I will talk to anyone who questions what we did and why. His phone number is not provided here. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, freedom! <laughs> yes, indeed, most the Fourth Reich. The Fourth Mother Frickin' Reich. 
Yeah. But <laughs> let's suppose you you call the police and report a crime of some sort. And that crime happens to not actually be a real crime. What will they do? What will they do? Even though they bust you for non-crimes. What if you report a crime that's not a crime? Reason.com, January 14th, 2020. Scott Sheckford. In Ohio City is declaring itself a crime victim. The city is a crime victim of a false police report and demanding restitution. Ohio's Marcy's Law has the potential to be abused for municipal cash grabs. Yet Ohio City is trying to use the state's Marcy's Law intended to protect the rights of crime victims to demand a man pay them back for the cost of sending police to respond to a false 911 call. Back in April 2018, Michael Knapp dialed 911 from his home in Centerville, Ohio, telling a police dispatcher that there was an active shooter there and somebody had been shot. There was no shooter. Police searched the home and didn't even find a firearm. According to a court report of the case, witnesses said Nab had been smoking meth and was hallucinating. A friend who was temporarily living at the home also testified that Nab, a little schizophrenic, a little on the schizo side. Nab was subsequently charged and convicted of filing a false report and misusing the 911 system. But the city didn't just stop there. Oh, no, no. Centerville claimed that as a victim of crime, NAB's false 911 call, the city was entitled to financial restitution under the state's Marcy Law. It wanted to it wanted NAB to pay back $1,375.56 to the Centerville Police Department for the cost of responding to the call. NAB is resisting. Uh oh, he's resisting. Better get that guy out of chokehold. He appealed to both his conviction, arguably, arguing that he absolutely, genuinely believed that he was in danger when he called 911, and the demand for restitution. The courts have upheld the conviction, however, but the Court of Appeals for Ohio's 2nd Appellate District in Montgomery Court has tossed out the restitution demands. The court ruled that while a city can be a victim of crimes like embezzlement and vandalism, Government agencies cannot be considered victims of crimes that they're responding to in official capacity. It cannot demand restitution simply for the cost of responding to calls based on wording of the law. Centerville asked the Ohio Supreme Court to take the case and reconsider the lower court's ruling. The court has said it will consider the question of whether a municipality can qualify as a victim under Marcy's law. Uh. <laughs> the story goes on. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh. <laughs> Total insanity. Total insanity. But they will do what they do, you know. They will try their best to get away with it. Okay. This is important news. And this is something that some of y'all out there may want to take into consideration. You know, you're, you're there somewhere. You're there somewhere with your sweetie. And, and you've just watched something on the Internet. Naked people doing naked things together. And you say, hey, that looks kind of cool. That looks fun. Hey, baby, let's try that out. And she says, what? You show her the little, the little clip, the little video. And she goes, well, I don't know. I guess all right. We'll, we'll try that. Well, you better be careful. <laughs> From the UK, Infowars.com, Paul Joseph Watson, January 14th. <laughs> 
numbers of snap penises hits new record because people are trying more risky positions after watching porn. <laughs> hey, look at that. Some, little, some acrobatics in our porn, baby. Let's give it a whirl. <laughs> the UK's National Health Service just recorded a number of snapped penises, a record number, recorded a record number of snap penises, with one of the reasons being because people are trying out more risky positions after watching porn. According to NHS figures, 164 patients sought surgeons' help in fixing their broken members, which represents a 38% increase in fracture of penis cases since 2014-2015. While NHS statistics show that uh, the most likely to be affected last year were men in their 30s and 40s, the youngest reported case was 18-year-olds, while the oldest was a 75 to 79-year-old. People are taking Viagra to maintain their sexual activity is another reason why such cases have increased. As previously, high, high, previously highlighted, Porn shrinks areas of your brain linked to motivation and reward. I'm going to call bullshit on that. Porn does not shrink areas of your brain. I wouldn't even have a brain if that were the case. <laughs> All right. Cambridge University found that pornography trigger triggers brain activity similar to that triggered by drugs. Oh, and in the brains of drug addicts. Come on, <laughs> Cambridge University. Right. It's also a sedation drug that disincentivizes you from attracting real women. I, I, I don't think so. No, I don't think that's true at all. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I know it's not true. <laughs> Porn literally rewires your brain and leads you to erectile dysfunction. Again, nonsense as well as potentially snapped penis. Now, that one, you know, potentially a snapped penis, if you're not really that bright and you try and do some kind of bizarre acrobatic move. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> so, <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> okay. And finally, lastly, but far from leastly, this article posted on CryptoGone.com, January 10th. U.S. alcohol-related deaths doubled over 20 years. Now, I don't need to necessarily give you too much of this, other than the fact that death certificates spanning 2017 uh, indicate nearly 73,000 people died in the U.S. because of liver disease and other alcohol-related illnesses, which is up from 36,000 deaths in 1999. And I will just say this about that. The number of alcohol deaths, 73,000 in 2017. 36,000 in 1999. Many thousands throughout every year, all the years. The number of pot-related deaths? Zero. Zero, zero, zero. There has never been a single death attributed to the smoking or consumption of marijuana. None. No illnesses befall you for ingesting THC. It doesn't happen. But marijuana, still illegal in most areas of the country and the world, while alcohol goes on and impeded, unimpeded. Now, I'm not saying alcohol needs to be impeded in any way, because it does not. No drug needs to be impeded. Anybody that wants to use something should be able to use it. Just saying, pointing out the obvious.
<laughs> Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. This has been Grim Leftovers. I am Grimner, and I will be back again next week with another episode of this. This is, and I give you another reminder now, the donation month for RealLibertyMedia.com. Head on over to RealLibertyMedia.com. Click that big red donate button and send some money our way so we can keep this going for another year. we got a lot of great shows here on RealLibertyMedia.com, RLM Radio. Oh, yeah, we put the stuff on YouTube. We put it on BitChute. We put it on Spreaker. We're all over the place for your listening enjoyment and education. So... Jump in. Give us a few bucks, please, if you would. We appreciate it very much. Uh, check the schedule on com for the shows throughout the rest of the week. Tomorrow, you got In a Perfect World with Flash and hopefully with Grammy. Maybe somebody else. Maybe more people. I don't know. But check him out. He's on at 3 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, it's a really good show. I, I enjoy Flash's programs. So uh, you all have a great rest of your evening and a good week or day, depending on where you are, you know. Uh, We'll talk to you later. Thanks, folks. Peace!